This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Previously, on Back to the Story. Well, I have a terrible idea. I cannot be there in ten minutes. I would advise you to be patient. Who do you want to come with you? I'll take you, Vespa. If they cause any trouble at all, raise the alarm. We'll have them killed. The Batars want them anyway. Amson's gonna cast Greater Invisibility on himself, and then he's going to cast Dimension Door to one of the hallways in the embassy. Wait, no, stop, stop, stop. So coming back in, Amson and Vesper have just dimension doored out of the cell and are invisible and have fell just to the edge of what looks like a eating room, a meat hall, some sort of cafeteria in the embassy. Because if you unbuckle on these two long tables, the room is maybe 40 feet by 30 feet with high ceilings. Um, as you slammed upon the edge of the table next to the door. Behind you as the door looks like there's a door on the other side as you see several Umba kind of stand up looking in your direction. A few of them grab the hammers at their side and look at each other before they begin to walk over. What do you guys do? Are we still like holding on to each other? You guys are right next to each other laying on the table. I'm going to reach out for Amson. So yeah. Yeah, you, you're right next to each other. You find him. Okay. I'll get up and start pulling him. Yeah. Yeah, actually, same. Okay, are you guys just trying to get out of here, or are you guys trying to be stealthy at all? Mm, probably trying to be stealthy. Uh, sure. Why not? Make not, not make as much noise okay. and just kind of disappear. Make straight roll stealth checks. Oh, because of the nat invisibility. 20. Nat 20 and Amazon. Uh, I did not get a nat 20, but that's a 14. Okay. Between Vesper or Amson, you guys begin to shift off of the table. And as you do, you're definitely trying to shift to where you're not no knocking over candles and cups and stuff that you already scattered everywhere. And as you shift over, Amson, you tip one and you try to grab it, but Vesper, the last one, grabs it as she's shifting off, rolling onto the seat, the bench next to the table, grabbing it and placing it back up on the table, shifting Bagging up towards the door behind you. Your backs are now up to the doors behind you, which are closed. The Umbach are still moving towards you, but they're not running. They're moving towards the table where you were about four feet from you moments ago. Is it a solid door or are there windows in the doors? Uh, it is a solid door. And they are closed completely? Uh, they are currently closed, yeah. Is there but any gap? Is it a, It's a double door, right? It's a double door. There's some gaps. It, um, yeah. Can I see through the gap be between the double door? Uh, yeah, someone looks like there's a hallway. Okay. Uh, does anybody else look like they're coming in this direction? From outside? Not as you can see. What about inside? Uh, there's a box. They're moving towards the tables where you were moments ago. They're now upon the table and are kind of looking around, tipping bowls over with their hammers. Okay, keeping track of how long I have on this spell, I'm going to wait until most of the people are not looking in this direction. So I might have to skip my turn to do that. Okay, so there's there's a five umbok in this uh, room. Three of them are right next to the table. The other two are kind of standing up about 10 and 15 feet away. And they're looking... Ooh, actually, 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 I know what I'm going to do. How far away is the other side of the room? Uh, the other side is 40 feet. There's double doors on that side as well. Okay. On the other side of the room, I'm going to make the sound of crashing plates using minor illusion. Okay. So the sound of plates crash from the other side. Immediately, all five of them turn quickly in that direction. Hammers up. Uh, and can trip break invisibility on that potion? Yes. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to let you take the lead. And I'm going to push us through the double door as everybody's looking in the opposite direction. Okay. Give me a stealth check at advantage because of the distraction. Yes. Do I have oh, to roll? And that's for you as well. Yeah. Shit. Balls. 25. Ass. Ass. 
not good. That's uh, 10. Is that an advantage as well, Vesper? with advantage, my friend. Okay. So the five of them turn around and kind of take a few steps towards the sound of the crashing plates coming from the other side of the door. As you guys are pushing through Amson, you push back and are grabbing and through the swinging door, pulling Vesper along. Vesper, you look back to get a final look before you turn your face and hit the door just a little bit, knock it. And at that, one of the umbok that's closest to you kind of tilts his head to the side and starts to slowly turn. Just in time, as you get into the other side of into the hallway, as the door slowly kind of rocks back into place. You see him narrow his, a, his gaze and takes a step towards the door. At which point, we gotta go. as you guys are figuring your next moves, we shift back over to the cell. So Ball, Melly, Ezekiel, Ellery, you guys are in this cell. The lift is going up. You can hear yelling in that other language, loud yelling. As the last guard has pulled out his hammers, kind of back to the lift, looking at you. What do you guys do? Are we in initiative order, or is it just... We're going to... I'm going to use guys in just big groups for now until we have to break it up. But for now, any four of you can act if you wanted to do something. What? So it's very clear that we Like, they're aware that shit's happening. The alarm seems, seems to be raised. Got it. Okay. Um, what's the situation with the cell door at the moment? Uh, it is closed and appears to be locked. Okay. So what I'm going to do, because it seems like shit's going down right now anyway, is I am going to go ahead and cast Storm Sphere using sorcery points to make it a bonus action, because I think speed is of the essence right now. Oh, gosh. And I'm going to cast it a little bit in front of the lift doors. Oh, boy. <laughs> Okay, so these guys immediately, and the, the guy in the lift is heading up. This guy has to, whoops. So the guy, as you stand forward, raising your hands up as the wind in the cell begins to blow around, lightning begins to crackle, and water out of nowhere begins to rain down on this sphere right in front of him. He immediately tries to grab the bars behind him, but he's thrown to the side onto the ground, taking that damage, 2d6. Okay. That's 10 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. He's thrown um, to the ground. And since I cast that as a bonus action, I'm going to go ahead and use my action to try and unlock the door of the cell. Okay. So you're stepping up to the door, pulling out one of your picks from Mogther's vest. Mm-hmm. Okay. So they didn't pull off of you, reaching your hands through the bars and doing it backwards, essentially, to be able to undo this lock. So, um, at disadvantage, I assume. At disadvantage, yeah, because of the exhaustion and because you're having to do it bit backwards, basically. You know what? First, I have not rolled to see if I get a surge yet. I don't. But I am going to go ahead and use Tides of Chaos on this to make that a straight roll. Okay. Which is a natural 20. Yeah, you swiftly <laughs> throw your wrist between the bars, turn, put it in. <laughs> White note, unlock it, and the door begins to open. And then I just as you see, I step back to clear that door for whoever wants to go through first. Stepping back, just as you see the umbok on the ground, kind of shaking his head against the storm, starting to get a look around, recovering. Ezekiel Ball, Melly, did you guys want to do anything? I will pray again, and I'm going to try and cast daylight in this room. Oh, boy. Okay. Yeah, go ahead and make that check. Okay. 13? That will make it. All right. So 60-foot radius of daylight. Okay, that will basically cover all of most or most of this room. Yeah. Um, as this daylight shines out, pushing back the shadows into retreat as this light streams out. And then I'm going to just get out here away from the storm sphere, but put myself in front. Okay. Ball, Melly. Um, did you say there's light now? Yeah, there's light, and I'll, uh, I'll give it to you. Yeah, sorry, Ball's a little blind, so I don't want to say what I'm going to do. I can't see it. If you'd like to go first, Melly. No, no, you, you go first. Do I see anything I could, that Ball could use as a weapon around here? Quick look around, no. 
there's the weapon in the Umbox hand and the guard's hand, but that's all you see. Okay, well, Ball will make his own weapon, I guess. Ball's going to grip onto his arcane focus that isn't attached to any weapon, and he's going to cast so his uh, Onyx Gem of the War Mage, and he's going to cast Phoenix Shower and do it at level 4. So he's going to have um, 8 Meteors um, kind of swirling around him, and with his uh, bonus action, he's going to... Well, yeah, and then with his bonus action, he's going to throw two of them in the vicinity of those two on backs. Yeah, four. I think it should be okay to cast a spell because it's one of the sorcerer spells. Yeah. Uh, um, and if you step out, you don't have disadvantage. Just try to shoot it between the uh, bars might be difficult. Okay, so he will step out. Or, or I will step out, rather. Yeah. So you squeeze through the small gate, getting outside, slinging the... This firestorm that is a ball now coming up to the edge of the storm sphere, slinging that ember stone towards the umbach. Is that um, a save so it's a, Yes, it's a DC or a deck save. Okay. That is a 10. And then do it twice because he's going to throw two of them. Okay. Uh, what's the radius on that? Each creature within five feet. So he's basically throwing it between the two since he can kind of see. So the, the other guy is on the lift and is about 10 feet up at this point. Okay. Um, is there anywhere where he could hit the two of them or not really? Uh, not, not really. There's, there's stone floor in the way. You could hit this guy down here though. That's fine. So you'll hit this guy down here. He feels he twice. Okay, perfect. And then I'll roll the damage and then that'll be the end of my turn. Okay, Melee, you're on debt as ball. You sling these two ember stones towards this guy, exploding next to him within this storm and rain and thunder. It's going to be 11 fire damage. It explodes as this guy's helmet slings off of his head, falling into the ground. You can see he has a flesh of gray stone almost, a beard of this sort of dark gray material. It looks almost metal and carved. That you can see half of his face burnt as he takes the shield on his arm and uses it to get to his feet, raising the hammer and shifting to block your way. Uh, Melly? Um, so I think Ball has to make a strength save where he is. Is he in it? I believe so. Am I supposed to be able to see a, like, uh, a circle here? Because I don't see anything. I did not put a circle. I should probably have a circle. Hillary, yeah. did you? I mean, did you put it here or... I thought you put it I, here. I thought I'd put it somewhere here. Okay, so ball, you're on the edge of it and not, um, not actually in it. But okay. it's a 20 foot radius, so it's bigger than oh. that. Oh, shit. So ball, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead and make it whatever you need to do. Oh, uh, that's a 21. That's fine. No damage. All right. Well, that's the end of my turn. Belly? Can I get past ball to get out of the cell, or is he blocking the door? Uh, you can squeeze through him. If I move to the edge there, can I stick my hands through the bars and cast a spell? Yeah. It might be hard if it's an uh, attacking spell, but if it's a save spell, you could probably do that. It's an attacking spell. So you'd have disadvantage if you're attacking. Um, yeah, it's fine. You, you might be oh, uh, 11 to hit. Uh, no, that doesn't. Uh, what are you casting? I was just doing my frost. Okay. Now, the frost, you put your hands through the bars and sling it into the storm, which rocks it in its path, and it slams uh, over his shoulder into the bars behind him, the fractals of ice going everywhere. He is going to shift a little bit, pull his shield up to his face that is burnt and helmless, and raise his hammer. So he is in guarding mode, jumping back over. So that is... Around. Jumping back over to Amson and Vesper. You guys are in a hallway. The door just closed behind you. So Vesper, you did see one Moonbok taking a step in your direction. What do you guys do? You can see there's the door to the mess hall behind you, and then the hallways go down far to the left and to the right. As far as you can see before they turn off. You know the Moonbok side is probably towards the right, and the Arcock side is probably to the left. Um, which way did we come in? When we got here, uh, the teleportation circle was on the left side or towards the Arcock side. We were seen. We have to hurry. 
do I recognize this hallway specifically? Like, did we walk down it? Uh, not this one specifically. Okay, I'm still holding on to Vesper. I'm going to make a bolt with her towards the Arcock side. Okay. Um, you guys sprint down the hallway, getting to the to the end. Uh, the hallway ends and then moves to the left. Coming around the corner, corner, you continue until you see a larger, wider hallway that is closer to 15 feet wide that opens up before you, leading into what looks like a foyer. You do recognize this place. Um, there is, from this foyer, there are three other doorways, or three other hallways. One is a, leads to a larger hallway that kind of runs towards the front doors where you left on your city tour. The other goes back towards the the dungeon where you were walked down. The other leads further towards the Arcock side, towards the teleportation. Uh, I'm going to lead her in between the hallways of the dungeon and the teleportation room. Okay. So which, which hallway are you going to go down? Towards the teleportation? Is that where you... She get into the yeah. room? Yeah. That room? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you guys move down this hallway. Uh, there are a few doors on the left and right as you're continuing that way. You guys can now hear yelling throughout the embassy, kind of echoing down hallways in front of you and behind you. A few seconds go by as you're running down this hallway where you start to hear, hear bells ringing, loud gong-like almost bells. Continuing down this hallway, you can you see where it ends, and looking around the corner, you can see. Uh, to Umbok, standing at the edge of a larger metal doorway, reinforced, that you know leads in towards the teleportation room. Are they talking at all? They have their their weapons out. They're looking, and they've kind of backed themselves back up to the door, hearing the alarm and bells. Should we go back? Should we try and get through? I'm going to peek into one of the other doors that are in this hallway. Okay. The closest one to you, you open up and it looks like an office of some sort. You see scatter, uh, paper scattered across the office. Does it have to be bronze? Um, this one is not. You know, okay. his is further down across the hall. You'd have to cross um, in front of the view of these uh, two guards to see, get to it. Okay. Not going into bronze, but in this one, I'm going to pull Vesper into it for just a moment. Okay. Um, and as you do so, you hear the footsteps behind you moving in your direction, but you close the door. Not a breath. You hear voices outside, muffled, some yelling. Give me stealth checks at advantage. Or actually, just straight roll for you guys. Wait, you're no. invisible, so at advantage. Thank God, because that was very, very bad. That was also very bad. But not in that one, so ayo. Uh, Kate. Ah, damn it. I wish I could have given Sorry. you my portent. I know. Wow. I rolled ten. Double fours. <laughs> you see the steps, hear the steps go by you. And then they retract. You can see the shadow of someone standing outside the door. And it gets close. And pushes the door open. At first slowly, then quickly, the door slams open as you see the Zumbach. Shield up, hammer up, looking into the room. He has a beard that seems to be carved out of gold. Eyes of the same. You see veins of that gold running through his forearms in this card on marbled armor as he begins to take a shift and take a step into the office. He's looking throughout the room. Bends his knees just a little bit to try to look under the desk in front of him. Lafasik, Lofat. He yells all out of the room. And what does he um, say? He says something's in here. As you hear footsteps moving in your direction from around the corner. I'll squeeze Amson's hand really tightly. You guys have a few moments before two more Umbach show up. Is there a closet in here? Is there anywhere we can actually get under or inside? There's under the desk. There's a few bookshelves on the side. Uh, oh, that's actually probably where they're going to look first. Uh, 
Can I just go to like an empty part of the wall and just stand against it with Anson? Yeah, you can. Okay. You do so. Yeah. Okay. Holding my uh, breath the whole time because I don't need to breathe. You and Amson holding your breath squeezed up against the wall as these three Gumbok begin to search in the room. You see one kind of stands at the edge of the room watching as the other two kind of shift in, look behind. There's a few fabric curtains that hang down, no windows, but just something to give texture. As they're looking around, there's not many places to hide around. After a second or two, the two kind of stop and turn back, and you can hear on the tail end of your tongues, there's, there's no other height in here. As the one closest to the door says, no, I saw something. They may not be seen, but something's in here. As the other two nod and begin to search around, kind of feeling with their hammers forward, their shields up in random directions. I'm going to make him roll another time. Would I have an action? Yeah. You have a few seconds. Okay. Can I use Gust to make a shift of wind blast past the guy right next to the door and, like, knock the door open? So you can certainly make a, a Gust. It may not be very powerful, but you can certainly make something kind of slam into the door behind him. Yeah, and, like, make the door knock open behind yeah. him. So give me uh, give me a slide of hand check as a verbal component. So just give me a... Okay. Um, let's see what I want to do for this. Okay, my slate of hand is okay. Disadvantage, obviously. Okay, that's an okay roll. That's a better one. Okay, 18 slate of hand. Okay. You whisper the words necessary, suddenly... This burst of uh, gust slams into the door that was kind of half cracked, slams it open behind the guard, who immediately swings without looking with his hammer, slamming into the door. Touch. Splinters go flying as he steps out, and the other Umbach rush out to the hallway. <sighs> you go that way. We'll go this. As they split, two Umbach go forward and one goes back, chasing after something they can't see. And as you guys plan your next move, we go back into the cell. There's that one umbok standing in the sphere, shield up, back against the, the wall. What do you guys do? In whatever order you guys want to. As far as Ball, Ezekiel, Ellery, and Melly in the cell. Do we have a way to barricade that lift? I might. How high up is this lift now? Uh, you guys came down it, and it's maybe 35 feet. Oh, but and we can no longer current, see current the bottom platform. of it. His current platform is maybe 20 feet up of the 35 feet total. You have to get closer to see the bottom of it. But yeah, you can no longer see it at this point from your vantage. They don't need the lift to get back to us, but we don't want anyone else coming down here. It does block our way out. Are you okay with that? In case something goes wrong, we can't chase them. Fuck. And it's difficult terrain to move through this guy, this stuff, right? Yes. Yeah, through the storm. We can use it as a last resort. I will, following Ellery's lead, uh, I will make my roll to see if I can even cast. 19, so I think I'm yes. good. And I'm going to lay a spike growth uh, a little bit further back. It's up to a 20-foot radius, so I'd like to kind of center it there, kind of okay. right, and leading out. Is it 20 foot radius? Yeah, it, it's a lot. Um, Boy. So, uh, but just like down that hallway a little bit. And uh, and just to be clear, the what's behind this umbach is the lift. So there's there's not a hallway, but there is a lift and then leading up into the embassy. Oh, oh then maybe I won't do that. Never mind. I'm sorry. I I thought there was a hallway and then lift. But if it's so, just... Yeah. Yes, just lift. So the bottom of the elevator basically is right there. I mean, you could do it, but it would uh, no. be clear. Knowing, knowing that I am instead, I'm going to bless the party that uh, the okay. four of us down here. Can I use that same role? Yeah. All right. You're so ready. everyone gets a G. Hashtag bless. And that's another second level gone. Okay. 
So you guys are blessed. Ellery Ball. How does this elevator work? Is it one of those that, like, does it have, a, like, a pulley system kind of thing? Um, can Ball attack the pulley it, of the elevator? It looks like any of the, the chains that are used to crank it up or down are on the interior of that area. So behind the guard, behind the bars, and in that area. But um, visible. Yeah, you would be able to see some chains kind of behind the guard, through the storm, behind the bars. There are some chains. Okay, uh, I think Ball's going to try to throw a couple of meteors at the chains. Let's see if he can, with the intent of trying to damage the elevator in some way. Okay. Um, I know these are normally saves, but I'm going to make you make a check just to send it through the storm, past the guard, through the bars, and then to actually hit a chain behind it. Okay, so that will be with disadvantage, but I have bless? Yeah. Okay. And just and do like a charisma check based off your spellcasting modifier. Okay, so using my spellcasting modifier? Yeah, you're like your attack, your spell okay. attack modifier. Disadvantage, but then plus your... Okay, so that would be a plus seven for me then. Okay. I'm going to roll... It basically, it's the equivalent of my saving throw, so I'm going to do a charisma saving throw at disadvantage. That's a natural one, so... Well, that's an 11 total with bless, but it's a natural one. You sling it forward, and as soon as it goes into the storm, there's rocks and a few rubble, um, and his helmet kind of called up into the storm to slam into it. It explodes. The flames and smoke kind of being pulled into the storm before dissipating. Okay, so even the, the explosion of the meteors don't hit anything? Uh, not with a natural one. If it was a natural one, I might have let it hit him. Okay, fair enough. And do you want that to count for both my meteors, or can I throw my second one? You can throw your second one, so that's okay. just one. That again. Uh, disadvantage. So that's a 25. Yeah. Okay. So you're able this time you line it up, sling it through, forcing it with just sheer strength through the wind over the shoulder of the ombak, through the bars, skinting them just a little bit. You see a spark of embers as it passed through, hitting the bars just a little bit, slamming into the chain behind. Go ahead and roll damage on that. Oh, that's six fire damage. Six fire damage. As it slams into the chain, poosh, exploding. The chains are are large, but you definitely hit them. And then I guess kind of seeing the, I guess the importance of this with, uh, he's going to use his action to cast a, a new spell, fire form, um, which does all this stuff, makes him super tiny and he can move through tiny spaces. And he's basically going to do that and run to the edge, like run through to get into where the compartment is for the elevator. And there, that is difficult terrain through that storm. So he would have 50 feet of movement. So okay, um, he'd be able to get, in, if, if halved, he'd be able to get here. Okay. So he'd be able to get through those bars on the other side. So he wants he to basically wants get to. there and then, yeah, get there and then just try to grip onto the chains that are going upwards. Okay. So try you, to weigh get, them down. you get in there at that point. Um Shifting into flame, darting through the storm, coming through the bars up under the lift. You can see above the platform is now stopped about 35 feet above. Um, and the chains have now stopped as well. Um, and then Ellery, do you have anything? I don't like the ball is holding on to these chains because I was thinking I might. I'll say ball's just gotten in there at that point after throwing two meteors and then turning into flame to dash in there. I was thinking of trying to send some lightning at that chain, seeing what he's doing. Okay, you can make a attack roll at disadvantage on that one. Okay. Towards the chain or towards the guard? Just want to be clear. The chain. Okay. Which is not great. That's ten. Okay. Lightning strikes next to you, Ball, at your feet, um, exploding in in arcane or in arcane lightning energy. Some of the shockwave runs up the chains. There's four of them in here before dissipating. And Melly is flipping over her book and is beginning to flip through the pages. Coming back up to Vesper and Amson. You guys are still in the room. The Umbach have just run off down the hallway. Okay. Quietly, I would like to inspire Vesper as a bonus action. Okay. And I'm very quietly going to say to Vesper, you're doing great. It might be in the dungeon, just a little further. 
So do you think it's, our stuff is in here, or...? Let's check the offices on the way there. So I'm going to lead Vesper out into the hallway again. Okay. And I should have, like, maybe 20 minutes left on tongues. Okay. I'm doing my math right. Can we... Can I hear... I'm basically trying to do that thing, you know, where they say if you want to know where somebody's keeping something, you set the house on fire, and that's the first place they're going to run. I'm, I'm wondering if people know that we're the ones causing problems and thus are trying to get to our stuff before we can and seeing where they're trying to run to. So it, as far as what you're, you've been able to keep up with so far is everyone's mostly yelling and raising the alarm. It sounds like a lot of people getting to post, getting armored and getting in the right places. You haven't heard any like specific uh, about who's doing this or what's going on. Just people trying to raise the alarm and the the three that got closest to you were the only ones that seemed more uh, focused on something as they run around the corners. You do hear them now are beginning to talk to the other umbok, the two at that iron door, um, about what they saw. You hear them mention, there's something in there, something we couldn't see. Shields up as they run off down the hallway. Okay, I guess we just did the old-fashioned way and start looking. So okay. you, you guys are in a hallway. From where you came back, there's a few other offices, presumably one similar to this. Going forward, you go around a corner, there's those two of them balk guarding that heavy door. There's also another uh, hallway that leads further towards the Arcock side, as far as you can tell. Uh, yeah, I want to... Uh, is it going to be in the dungeon, or is it going to be with the Arcox? I think it's going to be with the Arcox. So, do we want to check Bronze's office before we go? Well, that's on the way to the Arcock side. Okay, go there then. Yeah, we're gonna start heading t more towards the Arcock side, and the with the goal of checking in each of the offices to see if our box is there. Okay, um, so you guys come around the corner. You see the two guards there at the door, and you're kind of following slowly behind the two uh, Umbach that ran away from you guys trying to chase a gust of wind and rushing down in this next hallway over as you pass away from that iron door there are a few offices one of which you know is bronze there are a number of soldiers that are umbach that are kind of moving through this hallway some of them are moving away from you some of them are marching towards you um, you see doors double doors ahead of you that are beginning to close as two umbachs rush forward and the uh, doors are closed behind them Okay, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, I want to try to duck into one of the offices or the closest office to us. Okay, so there are two unboxes um, moving in your direction, not specifically towards you, but through the hallway. Um, do you wait for them to pass? Yeah, I'm gonna grab Vesper and then hold her up against the door and me, like right there as well. Okay, and then wait for them to rush past and then just push her and myself into yeah, the office. They 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 rush past, and as you push back, this door is locked. Next closest, then. Uh, moving over, this one's bronze is the next closest. Testing it, it's locked as well. Can I listen at that door and see if I hear anything? Bronze or the one before? Bronze. Sure, sir. Uh, perception check, disadvantage. Mm okay. Uh, that's a nine. They don't hear anything. I mean, there's a lot of yelling and bells going off, but you don't hear anything from the Spires, office. if you want to use it. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 12. Still nothing. Uh, I'm going to use my... Uh, da, 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 da. Um, I do have lockpicks on me. Can I? Hang on. Oh, yeah. Mm. And I have proficiency in thieves tools. It's those things. The, the ones that Ellery gave to everybody, and we hit on our persons. Did they find any of those? Um, I, they would have taken anything that was not hidden. Yeah, so no, they, the, the idea with the lockpicks was that everybody hid some on their person just in case they happened to get caught. So okay, I don't. I I know Mogther's vest like <laughs> auto hides these things, um, and there's a DC for it. Did I w make you guys roll to hide those? When you guys no, are coming in? No, because I no, think because I none of us it. remembered that we had them. Okay, well, let's make a retroactive roll to see if okay. you guys were able to hide them. What, do what you is want? that stat? Uh, dexterity. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, eight Slide fingers. of hand. Slide of hand. Oof. I'm going to use luck because I really need a lock pick. Actually, no. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to use luck. Okay, I'm definitely going to use that one. That's a 21. Okay. Um, we'll say you guys were able to have one lock pick each on you. Okay, I'm going to open the door, hopefully. Okay, make a lock pick check. Uh, are you proficient in these tools? I am proficient in these tools. Okay, make a check. Uh, using dex? Yeah. Okay. Disadvantage, I assume? Uh, yeah, from exhaustion. Okay, that is 17. Okay. Takes you a minute, but you're able to... As the door uh, creaks open. It's a dark room interior. No lights. Okay, and then I'm going to grab Vesper and pull her in. Uh, pulled in, uh, closing the door behind you. You're in a dark room, looking around as best you can. Uh, looks like bronze room. Looks like no one's in here. Uh, I have no further actions because that's move, and then my action unlock the door and bonus action inspire. So I'll use my action then to activate the Cobra Hood, so I now have 60 feet of dark vision. Okay, you're able to see better in the room. Can I see our chest anywhere if I start looking? Uh, looking around immediately, you don't see it. You can give me a investigation check at disadvantage to see if you can find it. God, please don't be too much worse than that. Yes, uh, it's a nineteen. Looking around, uh, you see a few chests, a few lock boxes, files, and bookshelves. You don't see the chest that you saw before when coming in. What files? Can I see what they are? Uh, there's no uh, vials of uh, files, just paper, oh, just like stacks oh, of oh. paper. Okay. Um, as you guys determine your next move, uh, I'm deciding what you're going to do. Coming back, Ezekiel, Melly, Ellery, Ball. You see the the Umbach guard is kind of struggling to stand up. He's kind of leaning up against the bars behind him. He's going to turn around and try to grab you, Ball. Um, does at the start of his turn, does he need to make something for Storm Spear? I think at this point, because he was already in there when it started, it's just if he ends his turn here. And I think Ball needs to do a strength save because he ended his turn in there as well, right? Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. And it's a strength okay, so save, we'll right? Yes, yeah, strength save. So we'll do it both at the same time. And um, did you get the fire damage from the Trail of Fire? Uh, no, I didn't. Is that 1d10? Will... Yeah, it's 1d10. Okay. Um, so it's a 14 for the strength save. Sorry, that doesn't make it. Okay, and then I'm going to do my saving throw for concentration. Is it and I is it an ability check or a saving throw for constitution for like concentration checks? It's a save. Saving throw. Saving throw. Okay, thank you. I rolled okay. well on the damage, so that's uh, almost the best I can get. Uh, Eleven. No problemo. And it's bludgeoning. Yes. So between the trail of fire left by Ball and then the turmoil that is the sphere, rubble and rocks being tossed about, this guy leans up to the back. It drops his hammer and slowly slides down the bars at his back um, after being pelted with some of this rubble, slinking to the side, dead. You see the blood kind of pooling out, mixing with the rain from the storm. How big is his hammer? Wink, wink. Uh, it would be a 1d8 hammer or 1d10 in two hands. This specifically, would, I be, would Ball be able to grab it and pull it through the bars? Uh, it's too big to go through the bars. Okay. Well, Ball's about to do something unless you guys jump in first. I know technically you guys were before him on the initiative. I definitely was not. But uh, I just want to know, what's this on the other side of the room? Is that another elevator or does that look like stairs down? So there's there's a doorway. There's bars, just like the other ones you can see through it. Looking down, there's a stairway. It looks like the dungeon goes deeper. And Braun did say he would put you in the lightest security sector. So it looks like there's deeper sections. All right. I'm just going to start making my way over there. I can't quite make it there this round, but I think I can get one more square. Or I'll dash and just get up there, and I'm going to just keep an eye in case something's coming up now that the alarm is being raised. Okay. And I'm just going to step out of the cell and, I guess, move more towards the center of everything. Okay. 
Um, so you guys are shifting. Melly's going to at least get out as well. Uh, Ball, what were you going to do? So to clarify, does it seem like the elevator has made it to the top and or it's yeah. stuck in the middle? It looks like it has made it towards the top. The chains have kind of gone slack. It looks like there are uh, gears of some sort that are holding it up at this point. Okay. And I'm basically in a storm, right? You're in a storm and you're in a small box, basically, in a uh, 10 by 10 foot or yeah, 10 by 10 foot little box. And nothing the below me. Or rather just like a flat surface below me. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Now, does it seem like there's a space, like if the elevator were to come crashing down, would it just smush me or would there be like a uh, space underneath the shaft? Uh, there's no space. There's maybe an inch where the platform would kind of sit. There's otherwise no space. So to clarify, like it, is ball kind of stuck behind this? Do I have to do something to get out of this or can I just kind of crawl out since the elevator is really high up? So you're, there are three walls around you, stone. Below you is a stone floor. And then the only wall that isn't stone around you is those metal bars that go up about 12 feet. And then about 35 feet above you is a stone platform. And it's stone all the way up. So you're in kind of a cylinder, basically. You're in the bottom okay. of a straw. Ball's going to start by trying to see if he can somehow melt the bars. I don't have heat metal, but I have, uh, I have ignite, which, I don't know, maybe that won't work. Paul's going to try to throw his meteors at the bars and see if that has any effect. And he's literally right in front of them, so he'll probably hit himself while he's at it. <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll that damage. I'm going to... Can I still try to deck safe my own meteors? Uh, sure, yeah. All right. I'll do the damage first just so you have it. So one and two. So the 12 fire damage. And then as for the deck save, I fail both of them but I'll take half damage since I can. Okay, so in this confined space, you sling these stones with explode and fire, hitting the chains. It looks like it damages them, but these are pretty thick chains. It'll probably take a good amount of damage to break them. Sorry, not for the chains, mainly like to get the, the bars that are these 12-foot bars that you said. Uh, the that bars? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and a uh, similar scenario where you're hitting them. Whatever metal this is, you're not familiar with, and it is tough metal. You're damaging it a little bit, but it's not looking like it's much much damage. Well, I don't know what to do. Ball feels kind of stupid. Ball, uh, can you get back here? Uh, Ball can, but Ball doesn't want to waste all his spells doing so. <laughs> okay. um, maybe Ball, we'll see what happens. He'll use his... He'll, yeah, that's just that'll be the end of his turn, is him trying to kind of get out of there. Maybe, can he pull them apart with his arms? I just, I don't know how strong this metal is. Can you bend the metal? Did you use your action to sling these things? No, that counts as a bonus action. Yeah, give me you give me an athletics check to see if you can bend these things. Eleven with disadvantage plus one d four, so twelve. They don't budge at all. All right, that's the end of Ball's turn. Um, okay. Ball doesn't hear Ellery through the storm, and he's a little focused. How about that? Okay, shifting back to Vesper and Amson, you're in Braun's room. You've searched, looked through a few things, and don't seem to notice any the chest that uh, your stuff was put into when he first came in. Are there any weapons in here? Uh, there's a small weapon rack with a few with a few hammers. So there's a hammer and then a strange-looking sword as well. How big is the sword? It uh, looks like a long sword. There's a serrated edge to it. Has a little bit of amber glass at the hilt. So, you know how we all have s those skill feats from when we created our characters, right? Mm -hmm. Amson's is investigator, which means that he can roll an investigation check as a bonus action. Can I attempt to roll an investigation check to, specifically in mind, try to find anything of ours? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. go and do that. Ooh, that's a good one. And disadvantage because of the exhaustion. That's not as great, but uh, I think I will take it with a 15. Okay. Storming through the papers as quickly as you can. Amson, do you speak Dwarvish? I do. Okay. It looks like Dwarvish. You you storm through the papers, swift, swiftly looking for anything. And you said you wrote a 16 or 17? 15. A 15. You are quickly rushing through all these papers. You eventually pull up what looks like a ledger. 
it sort of looks familiar. You're not sure where you saw it before. You open it up and you see it looks like the ledger where your names were placed when you first came in here. Just a lodge. Whose stuff went to who is in here. There's a name. There's a list of things. And the language isn't quite dwarvish, but it looks like a list of items and then a number next to it. Looks like maybe a room number or a drawer number or a chest number or something like that. So they split up our stuff between a whole bunch of stuff. There's a few numbers next to each name. Some of them overlap, but there's a few numbers. Okay. I'm going to look for Ellery's name because she had the bag of holding. And I would assume that her stuff, I would assume that all of our stuff that they took from the bag of holding would be under Ellery's name. So what's the number of Ellery's name? Six. Six. Okay. And Melly? Yeah. And Thirteen. Melly. Do the offices happen to be numbered? Uh, you didn't see any numbers on the doors. Okay. Uh, are the lock boxes in this room numbered? No, they're not. They look like uh, a few like jewelry boxes. You flip one open on the um, desk, it looks like cigars are in there. They're fairly small. Okay. We just have to figure out where these rooms are. Great. Is there a letter opener on the desk? Yeah. I'll grab that and okay. stick it up my yeah. sleeve. And the... uh, Can I use an action actually to rip off one of my dagger patches from my robe of useful items? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I have a dagger as well. You rip it off. The dagger forms from it. You see that same symbol that was on the patch is now on the hilt of the dagger. Um, Vesper, you pick up a like amber glass. Um, letter opener. I'm going to take us out of like super official initiative order and go a little bit looser just to get a little bit further with each turn. So you guys have searched this room, haven't found anything besides this ledger, which indicates your stuff is in some sort of either box or vault or door or something. It doesn't appear to be in this room. And we didn't happen to see any rooms where there was like a whole bunch of lockers or anything like that, hey? Not as far as you've seen. Find Amson's hand and take it again. Okay. What do you think it is? I'm not sure. It could be in the teleportation room or or somewhere closer to that. I'm sure there's a storage room. I wish there was some sort of like navigation check (laughs) (laughs) or something like that. Well, there's survival. I could, y'all could roll a survival if you're kind of at that point. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Can I try? Okay. You can roll separately at disadvantage, or one of you can roll straight roll. It's not going to be better than that. Uh, yeah, I'm going to. Okay, never mind. Oh. Maybe. Ooh. That's a good one. That's Seven. a good one. 17. 16. Okay. Both of you thinking, you didn't see much of this embassy, so you're thinking about what you saw. You saw the high security areas around the teleportation room. If you're going to put something to protect it or to keep it away from someone, you're either going to put it in that high security area or in the high security area of the dungeon. You don't remember in either area seeing specifically any lock boxes besides them putting it in a chest when you first arrived. You haven't seen much of the Arcox room either. As far as where you would probably put it, you're thinking one of the high security areas, the dungeon or the high security teleportation area. Let's try it here first. Yeah, we have to walk past the teleportation area to get back to the dungeon anyways. All right. Looks like we have to distract some more guards. Lovely. Yes. Looking around the corner, there are two guards, shields up, backs to this iron door. Got nine minutes. There are a few minutes more on this Invisibility potion. How much longer do you have? Mine's going to run out first, but I have more. It's fine. Can you cast it on both of us? Nope. Cool. So I can't do anything? Uh, Possibly. Yes. I would have to be visible. I have calm emotions. That's maybe the best I can do to keep us safe. But that won't last long. I can try to paralyze both of them. But you will be visible. Shit. And I'd rather not do that. Is that an in-character shit or an out-of-character shit? Both. Okay. (sighs) 
I don't know. Um, I hate leaving everything up to you, but if you can distract him, I can try and get in. I could probably distract him. Okay. And you'll stay invisible? Yes. Okay. I'm running out, though. I don't have much time. Okay. Let's try and get them out of the way, and, and then we'll head into that room. Okay. DM. Yeah. So they've been doing a lot of shouting. Yeah. Would Amson be able to figure out what the word for, like, help or assistance or something like that would be in their language? The closest you could figure out is the word in Torven. And you, you would definitely know that, but not in their language. The shouting is still going on. The bells are definitely still ringing, but some of the shouting and running has started to die down a little bit. Sounds like people are sort of beginning to get in place, though it's still a bit chaotic. Okay. I can yell for help in their tongue. Uh, if you can make some sort of other sound afterwards. Sure. We just okay. need to be in the right position. Yep. Okay, I'm going to lead Vesper back down the hallway towards where the two guys ran. Mm-hmm. Back towards the dungeon. Okay. And then I'm going to whisper to Vesper very quietly. All right. Three, two, one. And I just start yelling. And at the same time, I'm going to make the sound using minor illusion down the hallway of a like fireball explosion, like one of Ellery's fireball explosions. Okay. And I will stop screaming instantly. Okay. Give me a uh, Amson, give me a performance check. Hell yeah. And Vesper, give me a deception check. Do I have to? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, no. Can Vesper take my natural 20 portent? Please. She can. I would love it. So okay. Vesper rolls a natural 20. Amson, Just ooh, that's a good roll. Yelling for help. That's not a good roll. I need luck. That's better. That is a 19. Okay. This enormous explosion of fire. And Vesper yells out, and she deserves an Oscar for this because she yells it out in their tongue, in their accent. The explosion goes off and the voice is silent. You hear footsteps. Some yelling as one of the Umbach kind of moves around the corner, turning towards you. Uh, doesn't see you as he kind of has his shield up, turning around. You hear him yelling out on the hall. <sighs> Who's there? Is he slowly like taking steps in that direction? Every few feet he'll call again. I yeah, when the explosion went off, I wanted to like cut my screaming off basically like I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. So he's moving towards that where that noise was going was going from. And I guess against the wall we'll sneak, try and get back to the door. Okay. So coming around the corner, there's just that one umbach left back against the door. Old person? Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Do you guys want a second to think about it so we can go back to the other side? Yeah. Okay. So you guys, as you guys think about what to do next, we'll come back down into the cell. The storm is still swirling around. Uh, We're kind of in loose initiative at this point, so if there's something you guys want to try or do, you can do so. Ball, can you get out of there? Um, first ball is going to do his save because he ended his turn inside the thing. Um, I forgot to do that. It's a strength save. I thought you already did that. That was for the turn before that. Cause I oh, keep right. It. It's, okay. it's at the end of your turn and I keep forgetting to do it. Yeah, so it's a strength so, save. Strength save. 22. I think that's fine. Is what that was okay. So since ball still can't get out, ball's just going to use a spell to get out because this other shit's not working. So he will use... Uh, he'll use uh, the same spell he used to get in. So he'll use fire form to get out. That gives him that doubles his speed and makes him able to run out. And I just broke my rule twenty, so he'll run out and just kind of get out of the the storm sphere. When he kind of returns into his normal form, he'll say, uh, "I believe the Yongbak got out." What's the situation here? The situation seems. I have no idea. I think we're just waiting at this point. Should I bar the gate? 
try. That might be a good idea. Maybe I should drop the storm for now. It's not going to last much longer. I can bring it up again later. That's fine. So I'll let it drop. And when she does, Ball's going to, if you can, go over to it and try to collect some weapons. Yes, you have a, there's a shield there. There's also a 1d8 hammer, or it's a 1d10 in two hands. Does anyone else in our party use shields? I do. Okay, so Ball will hand the shield over to Ezekiel. Oh, good. Thank you. Wait, and then... it's metal. I can't. <laughs> the metal touches you. Ezekiel starts to kind of just melt. I'm melting. I guess no one um, else uses a shield. I could theoretically use a shield now. I could if I was there. <laughs> okay, so Ball will pass the shield to Ellery and say, uh, it's not exactly what we're used to, but mm -hmm. it's better than nothing. And then he'll kind of take his hammer in two hands and maybe start trying to attune the the his spell focus to this new weapon of his. Wait, Ball. Okay. Yeah. If the others aren't able to get our things back, we might Melly might need that to get us out of here. Mm. Melly, can you hold this? Is this too heavy for you? Uh, I can, but I need gems to cast teleportation. Right, fuck. Well, if Melly's going to be able, as long as Melly can hold the hammer, if it does have the spell focus attuned to it, I think she can still cast spells with it, if I'm not mistaken. For example, if I attach it to the weapon, can she grab the weapon and use it? Just as cast focus? with it. Yeah, she can just she can just cast with it, but it can't operate as a as a weapon and a focus. Okay, so then Ball will keep trying to attune, like attach okay. it to yeah. the weapon. Ball is focusing on that. As the storm drops and this dead Moonbok is on the ground, Ezekiel, were you doing something? I thought you said something. Yeah, I'm gonna go up to the gate, place my hands on the stone floor, and I'm gonna attempt to stone shape. Okay. So first, I will make my little check here. Nope, natural one. You attempt to, and the stone before you begins to ripple like water, and then it. <laughs> solidifies once more. Melly, what kind of gems do you need? Could they be part of jewelry already? Or does it have uh, to be separate? I mean, it has to be like chalk. I've already oh. made some. Fuck. Okay. Takes so we have to wait. While. I mean, if we have to wait anyway, because we don't want to leave without our friends, mm. but if they're not I, successful. She kind of stares off for a moment. As only Melly hears this, but I'm going to say it anyway. Listen here. I'm on my way back. But the Batar will get there first. If you throw down their weapons, get inside your cell, you might yet live. Diplomacy is over. And then Melly kind of, after hearing something, um, Ron's on his way and he's pissed off. He wants us to surrender. Well, fuck that. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> the DM's like, oh, shit. <laughs> okay, so you guys are in the cell as we hop back up to Vesper and Amson, who are standing outside of a, in a hallway, where you're looking up on a iron door where there is a umbok guarding it. Um, who's looking down the hallway but hasn't noticed you. Yes, Ellery. Before that happens, I don't know how far away... Oh, wait. No, I can't do that anyway. Because I need material components. Never mind. Okay. Uh, Vesper and Amson, what you got? All right. So how far away is the door from the intersection of these hallways? 25 feet. Perfect. I'm going to grab Vesper as we're still both invisible, although my greater invisibility is running out. I'm going to grab her and lead her closer and closer and closer <laughs> towards the door until we're about 15 feet away from the guy. Mm -hmm. So we're about 10 feet away from the intersection. Okay. Amson's going to, as he drops concentration on greater invisibility and becomes invisible, he's going to cast silence behind him in the intersection so that no sound can get through the hallway. When Amson becomes visible, then I'm going to let go of him and move to the side of the hall and have that um, letter opener ready to just, like, stab from the side as soon as the 
Umbach at the door rushes him. Okay. As soon as this occurs, you can see as the invisibility is fading from you, Anton, at the same time that you're casting the silence behind you, you see the eyes of the Umbach growing wide as he's seeing this suddenly. His shield comes up and his hammer comes out. As he immediately turns to his side in Vesper, you hear, They're here. Um, as he charges Shit. forth towards towards Amson. Rushing towards. I'll stab him as soon as I can. Okay. Go ahead and make an attack roll. I'll try and get him. Um, At advantage because I'm invisible. Give me a stealth roll to see if you are. Mm, stealth at disadvantage, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that is 14. Um, I don't think they're passive. No. Okay. 13, close. Uh, so he doesn't see you as he lifts his hammer above his head to come down upon Amson. As he d- does, as we step from the side. Is that, um... So that's a... Dagger stats, um, or...? Yes, a dagger. Yeah, a dagger stats. Okay, and is it advantage because I'm in- invisible, or...? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, that's a dirty 20. That'll hit. So... Oh, hell yeah. So that's seven, and then... Well, ten. So, uh, 17 piercing damage. Okay. And I think that drops my invisibility, too. Okay. As you're suddenly invisible, as he's charging, you see there he is in pretty heavy armor with a shield. But luckily, he doesn't know you're there. As he lifts up, he drops his shield forward to block Amson, leaving a chink in his armor. And you slide it between two plates, gliding it in and into the wet um, as you pull it out, the blood dripping down the side as he looks over to your side. Um, you can hear yelling from behind you as he turns and swings. First, Damson. So there uh, shouldn't be anything from behind us because Ansman casts silence. Uh, yeah, uh, in the other direction. I'm sorry, in okay, front. Okay. So where the okay. where the door is. So that's eleven for Amson. Nah, man. As he swings towards you, you kind of sidestep it as he's kind of knocked off balance from the dagger in his side. And then we'll go ahead and do two rounds since uh, since that was pretty quick. Amson, and then Vesper, and then this guy will go again. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, oh, come on, you've got to do better than that. And I cast Hideous Laughter on him. Okay. Actually, no, I'm not going to cast Hideous Laughter on him. I'm going to cast Hold Person. Okay. Um, wisdom say? Yeah. That is a 14. That does not say. So okay. he is completely paralyzed. <laughs> and the silence is gone now because I'm holding okay. concentration on Hold Person. And he is frozen in place as he's looking towards Vesper. In a halfway through a swing towards her. Would you kindly move out of the way, Vesper? I will kindly move out of the way. Are you stabbing him? What does that mean? Are you just walking? I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm I mean I mean cool line, but what's going on? No, because he was, <laughs> she was literally standing in the way of his hammer that's about to swing. Yeah. So okay, so okay, I'll so move you step around. out of the <laughs> um, he's still, I'm going to just come and try and cut his throat. Sure. So, um, add advantage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, uh. And it's an auto crit. Yeah. If yeah. You hit, so 22. Then yeah. it's auto crit. Go ahead and roll that beautiful yeah. damage. So that is, oh, and it's that dice. is sneak attack because you, uh, mm-hmm. it sure is. You have advantage. For so. a lot of reasons. And I double my sneak attack die, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I love hearing how many dice you're rolling. That's so good. This is why I love rogues. <laughs> uh, uh, 23 piercing damage. Yeah, you slip this letter opener up under his beard and slide it sh- through. For flesh that looks like stone, it cuts pretty easily as you slit under his throat, the blood kind of pooling under um, as he's unmoving as the liquid slowly drips down his armor. You guys turn, and he he suddenly falls to the ground once he's dead. Okay, let's find these and go. Can I walk up to the door? Yeah. And uh, Amson will gently knock, just ding, ding, ding. And he'll say through the door, you know, if you just hand over our stuff, we'll leave, and you all can live. You're... Yelling in another language by the door. I'll go up to Amson and I'll I'll just shout what he said again. Okay, uh, make an intimidation check. Oh God, me or I'm not him? Good at me or her? Uh, her, since she's actually saying it. Uh, oh, yeah, so she does so. 
does she does so um as a straight roll because yeah, straight roll. Okay, we'll with the same I gave number the words. You're uh, guiding her words. Fourteen. Okay. Um, oh, you say it. There's sudden silence on the other side. We don't want to fight. We will if we have to defend ourselves. Silence. I don't really want to open this door. Is it locked? I don't want to try it. I don't know. You just hear footsteps behind you. I'll turn. You guys see on the under, other end of the hallway, you see a vampiric man in amber glass armor, hands behind his shoulders or hands behind his back in the small. You see a few skeletons, maybe six of them, and a white at the front of them. The man speaks up. Yes, you've need quite a bit of ruckus. It's a busy time for me. Pulled away from the ceremonies. I've heard Braun has made yet another mistake. And I appear so have you. He told us we were able to leave, and then he didn't let us leave. His authority over your fate has been retracted. You're now under the jurisdiction of the Testament and the Batars. I'll make this an easy choice for you. You'll come quietly with me, escorted by the 100 skeletons outside this embassy, where we will inquire about your purpose and what you know. The other option is you will add to the death and power of this army and join our ranks. I will offer this choice only once. It would behoove you to hear it out. I really want to cast suggestion on him and say, uh, you know, if you just give us our stuff, we'll leave and you'll never see us again. Are you actually casting it? Sure, why not? Okay. Is that a wisdom save? Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, you've lost that privilege Ron so foolishly gave to you. We will gather your things as we will be looking through them. Now, you came with a few others. Is that not correct? I just set my jaw. We will find them if they have already made their moves. Again, I would not be as forgiving as Bron was. I am not naive. The easier you make this for me, the easier it will be upon you. Can I tell if he just wants to, if he'll just end up killing us anyways? You can make an inside check to see, to read his face a bit. Let's talk. That's a 10, so. He looks stern, fed up, frustrated. In the the, ten, the tension in his muscles and his shoulders, you can tell he's clenching his fist behind his back, but his face looks strangely calm. Can I just ask a tabletop question just really quickly? Sure. Swan, how certain are we that our stuff is in the room behind us? <sighs> Do we want to make that gamble? Um, it's a very good question because we know that the room is also full of people. DM, how many voices did we hear when they were uh, talking? Rough guess. Three at least. It's kind of muffled behind this thicker iron door, but at least three. Umbok. How close is the skeleton, or are the skeletons in this vampire to us? They're about 20 feet away from you. I look at Amson, basically asking if we want to take the gamble. I hate making calls. Because <laughs> uh, I can do something right before we pop off. I can at least try and do something to help us out a little bit. I can get us in. And, uh, For to give a brief flash down below, were you guys thinking of doing anything that, you know, would matter right now? Maybe just uh, 
trying to see if we need to do anything about the downstairs. Like we've got, we'll hear something if there's something coming from upstairs, but we don't know what's going on downstairs. Okay. Okay. Um, I just didn't want to like stop y'all from doing something that would completely alter the situation. So you I don't think that'll like, super alter it, but just so okay. you don't get surprised. Yeah. So you guys are looking down there. It looks like there's more dungeon below, uh, flashing back up. Amson and Vesper, okay. you're standing there. I'm going to uh, table talk for just a second because I was sure. asked how sure we are. I yeah. feel like it's more likely here because they would have to lead us here. And this is the last place we'd be before we left. Whereas if they kept it in the dungeon, either someone would have to go down and get it and bring it with us, or we'd be armed all the way through the embassy. So I'm pretty certain it's here. Okay. And DM, can you describe the teleportation room and the route that we take in order to get to this door? Yeah. So when you came through, there was a room. There are uh, murder holes basically in the teleportation room itself where guards could potentially look into the room. There is a lockable door from the teleportation room into a hallway where there are doors on each side of about a 20 foot hallway lockable where they actually took your stuff from you. And then you continued out of that hallway into a small room with another door and then a door leading into where you are now. So going the reverse way, you would enter into a small foyer room where there are two doors, one where you went to the hallway leading to the teleportation circle and one you have not been into. All the doors to your knowledge are lockable and pretty high security. Okay, I'm going to look at Vesper. I'm going to grab her. I will look back at the skeleton. I'm going to pull Aien's holy symbol out from under my shirt and just go get fucked. And I'm going to try and channel <sighs> divinity. I'm going to try and channel divinity and turn undead. <laughs> okay. You can see as you guys look towards each other and look back, you can see another white steps out of the um, skeletons and they drop, kind of unfurl these manacles as they kind of take a few steps forward as you pull out your symbol um, and say that. And is that a wisdom save? Uh, I believe so. I'm really bad at channel divinity, so hang on. <laughs> it's always the one player thing I can never get right. I believe it is. I'm shaking so hard now. Um, yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on. Uh, yes, it is a wisdom yeah. save. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, Literally that's okay. me too. So any each undead that can see or hear you within 30 feet must make a wisdom saving throw. The save is 15. Okay. Let me just pull this guy up because this matters. The first white makes it 14. Uh, no, 15 is the save. And uh, is there a CR limit on it? Um, no, it's all undead, but the destroy undead has one half limit. Okay. And then, okay. And then just a few there. God, so many numbers. So one of the whites holding the manacles drops them, tush, clattering to the floor as he slowly like steps, steps back before pushing <laughs> through the skeletons. Two others come with them leaving a few other skeletons, the vampire, the kind of shoulder is kind of pushed over before they come back and re into resting position. <sighs> As he takes a few steps forward Amson. and picks up the manacles. I cast Dimension Door on me and Vesper, and I would like to teleport sure. us in the hallway just outside of the room where we were disarmed. Okay, in the hallway itself? Yes. Okay. <sighs> You enter into this hallway. Um, it is empty except for those tables on the sides where they used to kind of take stuff out and place them. There's a door behind you closed and then a door 20 feet towards the teleportation source, uh, circle closed. Is that the door that leads to the teleportation circle? Uh, the one in front of you, yeah. The one behind of you is back towards the skeletons. Uh, I'm going to go towards that door. Towards the skeletons? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that one's right. That one's right beside you. Okay. And were we in this room? This is where you disarmed before, if okay. that's what you're asking. Can you just describe the hallway again? Yeah, so uh, there's, there's about a 20-foot long hallway. There's looks like high-security doors on each end. There's a few tables to the side in this hallway, otherwise bare. This is where you disarmed and they put stuff on the tables before putting them in the chest and taking the chest off. Away from you towards the teleportation circle. So on one end of that hallway, it will take you to the teleportation circle. On the other end, it takes you to a small room where there's a door out to where the skeletons are and another door into somewhere you haven't been before. Okay, I'm going to go the way 
where we haven't been before. Okay. The okay. door in front of you is locked. Can you pick this one? I can most certainly try. Do that. You... I'm going to try something, and hopefully it'll work. And if it doesn't, please don't die on me. Uh, you can just... hear voices on the other side. I'm casting Spirit Guardians, or I'm going to try. Okay, try. Oh, shit. That's a natural one. Ran right into one of my other dice on the desk. But... There's a uh, brief pop of energy, but you don't even see a flash as nothing comes. Shit. And I'm going to try to unlock the door. Okay. Okay. Please roll higher. Thank goodness. Okay. Uh, that's a 16 to unlock the door. You click through it and are able to unlock it. And I push the door open. You it open a room full of lockers. <laughs> yeah, you see a small room, um, about ten by ten feet. There are three umbalk in here. You can see one is has his back to you and is unlocking a door towards where the skeletons were. You can hear voices on the other side. You can see two others that are kind of looking at him. Hold um, person. He, wh which one? The one unlocking the door. Okay. Hopefully. Seventeen. Uh, I have to roll the pop to do the okay. spell, right? Yeah. And that one was cocked. Um, that's a 16 to cast. Uh, that'll that'll come through. Um, okay, and then he rolled a 17 on the wisdom save. Shit. Yeah. So he continues to unlock as the other two Ombok turn around towards you as the other door is beginning to open. Can I try a hold person? Um, I feel like what? I've done too many things. No, um, please do, because... Uh, I would like to cast Old Person on the one unlocking the door and one of the other Umbok at third level. Okay. So 17 and 11. Okay, so one of the Umbok are paralyzed. So one of them, one of them freezes as he's starting to turn around to look at you. As the, the door is beginning to open at this point. As the other... The other two unlock after unlocking the door, spin around, shields up towards you. The door opens, and you can see the vampire standing out there. He has dark black hair, a bushy black beard, and these black eyes. He kind of looks like George, but a vampire. You're prolonging this and making it worse on you in the end. You gotta hold the manacles out. I'm gonna try Spirit Guardians one more time. Our last okay. third level spell slot. Be better. 14. That'll come through. Holy shit. As the spirit guards begin to surround and slam into him, it kind of flinches at the pain. It kind of is beginning to sear into him as it begins to take steps forward. Can I run to so that can other I door? Roll that damage though, because that's some radiant shit right there. Okay. You can you can roll that damage. Um hopping back to the other guys. <laughs> Because <laughs> I know it's been a while. Um, what 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 are you guys doing down there? Because I, I do want to I do want to uh, sort this out up top, but also I know you guys have been patiently waiting. There's no sign that the elevator is coming back down. After a few minutes, you hear the grinding of gears. I'm gonna try stone shape one more time. Okay. Uh, so first I've got to do my thing. Please don't suck. 16? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to place my hand on the stone. And with a five foot cube, I'm basically going to weave the stone into the bars. Basically fill the bars, merge it with the floor so that the gate can't move. That it's in yeah. intertwined with the stone. Okay. So rising like vines. These things, the stone grows up, wrapping around the metal and fusing together, forming this wall. You can see small little texture of, of bark and leaves kind of grow out in stone upon this thing, completely enveloping and closing off this front entrance in towards where the lift is. Uh, and then I'm just going to back up and stand in front of Ellery and Melly. Okay. Uh, and here. so I can't see anything through... The, uh, through that gate now, right? Uh, not towards the lift. You can hear ch -ch 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 dully behind the stone as the lift is moving, but you can no longer see in. I'm just going to 
cast Storm Sphere again. Same place as I put it last time. Okay. <laughs> the storm begins to shake and rumble and thunder, picking up little rocks and rubble, shifting the body of the mock dead as the storm rages. As if kind of backed up there watching this, where this now solid wall of stone and cardon metal lies behind you. You can see the cardon bars as well, leading deeper into whatever dungeon this is. As you hear the elevator, uh, we can't quite over the storm. You do, however, hear tush, tush, slams against the stone that Ezekiel's formed. It's holding for now, though. Are you guys doing anything else? How long will this hold, Ezekiel? Until they break through. When Amson and Vesper return, they will return here. I don't think that we can... We have to stay here. Yeah, we can't leave them behind. Not that we can go anywhere without them anyway. Continue to hear that douche, douche of hammers against the stone on the other side. You know, a few stone twigs crack, breaking as the leaf falls to the ground, shattering onto the stone. Picked up by the wind, more stone added into the, the fury. Ball, Ball kind of pauses and he just says, uh, maybe we should prepare to fight. And Ball kind of grips his foreign weapon. Okay. Ball grips his weapon unless there's something else kind of nods to each of you. Looking back at the wall that is slowly being broken down that it's holding. As soon as there is a... If the wall breaks down and there's a sign of a person, then Ball would want to do something. Otherwise, yeah. just kind of sitting there ready. Okay. So you're ready to roll as soon as that happens. Yep. Um, and, and I assume everyone can have a, a ready to action. And then Ellery, I'm going to basically roll and see how long it rounds it takes for them. And then we'll roll your storm sphere damage on them. Okay. Basically. That way we can do it all at once. So coming back up, Vesper has just cast the... It's half speed for him to try and get through them. Okay. And... He needs to make a wisdom save, or he takes 19 radiant damage halved on on a save. Uh, fails. So, yeah, 19 radiant damage. Okay. You notice as this radiant damage burns out, there's something about the shadows that force it down. But it still burns against the side of his face, searing in. I'm going to push uh -huh. Amson towards the door, and I'm going to keep myself and the guardians in between the everyone else in the room and him. He rushes towards you. And he is going to. I really wish I had. Uh, can I do anything before he gets to me, or is that his turn? No, he's he's now. Okay. It's now his turn. Okay, okay. 14. Will not hit. And 23. Will definitely hit. Okay. You take 11 necrotic damage, and then make a constitution saving throw. Mm, that's an 8. Okay. Your maximum hit points are reduced by that as well. If they hit you, or you're dead. Um, you also see those few wounds from the radiant da damage as he reaches out his his hand and draws the energy from you. It comes into yeah. him, healing him up. And the spirit guardians drop out of his concentration. As uh, Amson, you're pushed towards the door. Uh, the Ombak are turning around as a the white followed by the skeletons are moving into the room. The white gets up to Amson, between Amson and Vesper, but isn't able to make an attack as a skeleton kind of pulls in behind into this very cramped room. Amson? Okay. Uh, I'm not going to rely on roll for this. I'm going to remove the window patch from my robe of useful items, smack it against the door, and create a window for me to run through. You create that window. It opens up into a room. You see, it looks like the interior of a bank vault. There are numbers of cubby holes all along the walls. In each cubby hole, there seems to be a chest of some sort, each numbered. Yes. I'm going to bonus action expeditious retreat myself. Does that uh, do something with attacks of opportunity? Do No, I it know. just makes me able to dash. Okay. Shit. At the end of his turn, can I move using skirmisher? Uh, yeah. Where are you going to I'm going to move half speed, uh, so 15 feet. I'm going to move towards Amson. I'm basically just trying to stay in between him and all of our enemies. Okay, you can only really move one square, but that does prevent the white from getting between you and him. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so attack of opportunity against Ampton from uh, the white. That is a 12? No. Okay. And then from the Batar, the uh, yeah, lower. Probably not. <laughs> yeah, so you're able to move into the room. All right, so I move into the room, and then I'll yell after Vesper, come on, I can close it. Okay, then on my turn, I would like to dive through there. Okay. You move through. They use their disengage, reactions. Disengage as a bonus action, and then rush through. Okay. You disengage, preventing the Umbok from getting a strike on you, and you're now in this room. It now comes to him before Amson. He moves in um, and is going to uh, step in and is going to take a second. And I'm going to make it out of this. I will. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop, stop, stop. No, why would you do that? Sorry, my uh, is he monster if, manual if, fucked up. So I have to, in order to, for me to close it, I'm going to be standing right at the window. Is he on the opposite side of the window? Uh, yeah, at this point. Okay, good. I would, I have months to do, and I don't have time to deal with your silliness. Please, make this easy upon me. Uh, Amson, I need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, fuck. Uh, okay, let me see what I got. Du -du -du. I have an advantage on saving throws against being charmed because okay. of Fey ancestry. So you have an advantage? Yes. FLs are bullshit. Please, 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 please. I need this. Okay, that's good. That's not as good. So, uh, my wisdom save is not good. I'm just going to make sure that I don't have anything else. I'm out of lucky, unfortunately. I'm out of portent. I really hope a 14 saves. You look at him through the window um, as Vespers move behind you into the vault. You look over your shoulder as Vespers beginning to look for the numbers for where your stuff is. You look back and you look into the black eyes of this batar. His amber glass armor, his hands behind his back calm. And you realize how foolish you've been, how reckless. Your friend here is just trying to do the best, the best he can and wants best for you. You're charmed by him, and you see him as a trusted friend to be heeded and protected. And you're not under his direct control, but you will take his request or actions in the most favorable way possible. Please, take a step outside. Amson. We'll sort this all out. He kind of steps to the side just a little bit to let you back into this room and away from the vault. Okay. Oh, gosh. This is hard. Uh, so because of the spell, Amson is extremely conflicted. Let's see. Take what. a step back. So what this through. the window. I think because this guy is a trusted friend, but Amson sees Vesper as even more than that. I think he'll hesitate taking a step out, but he's not going to close the door. And he's going to look at Vesper and say, like all of a sudden he just changed his mind after all of this. <sighs> I don't know, Vesper. He's... I mean, look at everyone there. We are outmatched. We're not outmatched. He puts his hand on Damson's shoulder and kind of nods. It's all right. Don't worry, Will. Get it all sorted out. Just take a step out. A friend will be right behind you. We'll talk to someone in charge. We'll get it all. We'll bring Broad in. The whole thing. I... Can I tell that Amson is charmed? Uh, make an inside check, I'll say. Fuck. As he's kind of guiding Amson out of Fuck. this room and back into the embassy. Uh, that's a five. That's uh, yeah, something's right? weird going on, but but uh, it's, I mean, yeah, disadvantage. Yeah, something's weird going on, but I mean, this is, I mean, you Amson. are outmatched. I grab him. He, could, he could believe that. What are you doing? No, we can get out of here, please. The white kind of steps up next to you. Oh, let's see, four, five. Amson. I'm just looking at Amson. I'm just holding onto his arm as tight as I can and planting my feet. Amson. Amson. Please. She can come with us. Move, he says to the Ombok who kind of steps I cast. Aside. I try and I channel Divinity again. It worked the first time. 
I'm I'm turning undead. Make a initiative check for me a disadvantage, as the white is going to try to grab you first. Shit. Um, he rolled like shit. Let's see what his dex is there. Got it. Seven. He grabs Fuck. onto your wrist and kind of pulls it back down. Um, Amson, he he is guiding you out of the door, out of this room, and back into the embassy. Uh, um, you're kind of flanked. The skeleton's kind of part ways for you to move. As he's getting guided out, he's going to grab at Vesper and say, uh, we should probably go with him. Can I... I don't understand why he's acting like this. Can I try another insight check? Can I try and see if... The, the white at this point is putting the manacles on you. I'm struggling. I'm not letting him just do okay. it. Okay. Uh, make an uh, acrobatics or athletics check at a disadvantage as the white comes in. And then the um, two um, bots come in. 23. Okay. Don't you fucking touch me. Can uh, I try see if I can figure out yeah, if Samson lying to this guy? Is it is he pretending uh, to I'm, go along? I want to find out what's going on. Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm going to say you kind of have to deal with that first check where you're not sure what's going on. It's a weird situation. Samson, we're so close. And I'm, I'm backing away. I'm trying to get to the boxes. Okay. So Amson is being guided away from you. Yeah. I'm trying to okay. get 13 was my least box. I'm trying to get to box 13. Okay. Um, you move in towards the box, um, search around for the box, and you find it. Uh, by that point, Amson, you're kind of guided out, out of this room and towards more of the center of the embassy. There's another vampire, two more whites, and a number of other skeletons as well. You see a few Umbok are kind of standing, standing to the side, unable to do anything at this point. Ah. <sighs> This is tough because I don't want to. I don't want to meta game, but I because because Amson's loyalty hasn't changed towards Vesper, correct? She, yeah, but this guy is still a. I, I think a trusted friend going, that takes yeah. the actions in the most favorable way possible. I think he'll still say um, he he won't fight at this point, but he'll still say uh, Vesper's going to come too, right? Of course, Amson. Yes, of course. She'll be right behind you. I have my best officers on it. They're going to give us a slight smile. Can I run up to Amson with the box? You've got the box turning around. There's a white and... Disengage bonus action. The, the hallway is filled. The room is filled with skeletons and Umbok. At this Movement point, as you turn action around. to dash and bonus action to disengage. To get They're there. filling the spaces. There's no pathway. As and you turn the around, channel divinity that I cast. He, you did. I he did. stopped you. He grabbed your arm and, and put your arm down. Can I try it again? As you're deciding what to do next, which may be that down at the at the base, there's a few minutes of cracking, the stone breaking, shards falling to the ground. Ellery, give me four rounds worth of your damage. Okay. I have the perfect um, number of dice prepared for this. And as that's happening, if you guys down there wanted to do anything, you had a few, you know, a minute or so as this wall is being banged on by hammers on the other side. Uh, that's 30 points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. As these cracks begin to form in between the bars themselves of the stone being pressed out. Uh, eventually, you can see enough to where you can see an umbok slamming against it. Um, you can see he's wounded and bleeding. Um, and as uh, enough of these shards fall to the ground, you see there are two others dead behind him. As soon and as another I, one on his knee getting up. As soon as I can see the one that's, that's slamming at the uh, gate, mm -hmm. I want to use my bonus action lightning. Okay. And uh, so go ahead and roll that. And Ball, you said you were going to do something. And then Ezekiel as well. Uh, 22 to hit. Hits. That's 16 points of lightning damage. The lightning slamming into the bars where the electricity runs through them, cracking over a bit more stone. Uh, but the most, the bulk of it slams into the chest of this heavily armored Boombach. Um, he flies back into the lift, slamming against the back wall before slipping down unconscious, bleeding. There's one more on his knees that tries to get to his feet. 
within the storm. Um, Ball, Ezekiel, did you want to do anything? I think Ball seeing everybody just slowly falling from the storm, and because it's just cracks, and he, Ball wouldn't really be able to hit anybody through there. Ball doesn't see anyone necessarily important, so Ball's just going to kind of continue to hold his ground and just kind of okay. ready for a bigger threat. And Ezekiel? Uh, I don't have anything that can go through, so I'm just <laughs> waiting. Uh, I'm how it's only been a couple minutes so far since Amson and Vesper left, or uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, a few minutes. All right, and he's just gonna start to look worried at Ellery and just whisper into her ear, "I may have to do something. I promise you, I won't abandon you." I believe you. Melly's still around, right? Yeah. Doesn't does Melly still have uh, sending? Uh, she does. So maybe while Ball's sitting there, kind of like, you know, standing his ground, he'll look behind his shoulders and just say to the party, like, uh, "We might not have much more time. Should we? How are they doing?" We should check. Um, I can. I can check. Vesper, as you're turning around, holding the box to see the wealth of the will kind of faced against you. You hear Melly's voice in your head. Um, guys, it's a little crazy down here. You guys okay? Amson surrendered. We're surrounded. We're trying to get back to you. In the dungeon, she comes back, looking at Ball and Ellery and Ezekiel. Amson surrendered. Um, they're what? Surrounded. They're trying to get back. Fuck. Uh, Ball will take his the hammer that he got from the on back and just start trying to slam on the stone. Like in like in anger, or just are you trying like to trying break to, down something? We might need to use this elevator to get out now. So okay. he's trying to get the stone out of the way. Like, doing what that other Ongbok tried to do and then died doing gotcha. it. Gotcha. Okay. Um, so you're moving into the storm, rushing in, slamming against the what's left of the stone. Um, Through the stone, like through, through the bars and, and what's left of the stone, can I see anything that would indicate... Like, is anything that seems like it would trigger opening the gate? Not from where you are, but you did see someone inside of the lift touch something against the wall. Okay. And it came down, so you can't see it from where you are, but okay. presumably there's something in there. Ball, give me athletics check. Any changes for Ellery, Ezekiel? You guys doing anything? I'm... I think I'm slamming my lightning against the stone, specifically. Okay. Okay. And disadvantage for athletics check, right? Correct? Uh, yeah, because you're the exhaustion. Nice. And it's a 20 anyway. You shattered the last kind of bit of stone that's remaining. There's a, just a little bit um, at the bottoms that are still still there. But most of it that was wrapped around the stone has been, at this point, pressed off. And is there uh, still... And you said there was still someone on his knees on the other side? Or is everyone... Oh, cool. Yeah, there, there's still one Ombok on his knees that's kind of struggling to get up. He looks heavily wounded from standing in a stone for, or standing in a storm for a few minutes. Uh, Bob will look at him and say, open the gate. He kind of nods towards you, and the guy stands up, shoves off his shield, and puts his hammer in both of his hands in a fighting stance, ready to, to die if he needs to. Ezekiel? Uh, yeah, I... Uh, fans been surrendered. It's already too late. They can't get back. Then we have to go to them. <sighs> right. I don't have anything I can do. I have no weapons. I have nothing. My spells are gone. <laughs> don't you have, can you do the Shalala law thing? That's if I have a staff, it turns it into a magic staff. It doesn't create one. Uh. I'm trying to see, like, if I can get close to the bar, see if I can see how that is activated. You saw someone flip some lever on the inside, but you can't reach it from this side of the bars. It's in the lift. But can I tell where it is? You, yeah, you have a rough idea of what wall it's on. So I am going to cast Mage Hand and try and see if I can flip it that way. Okay. 30 foot range on that, 5 yeah. foot pound. You cast Mage Hand, reaching through the Ombak uh, inside on his last leg, swings at the arcane thing, just going straight through it, slamming into the stone platform below um, as the hand is able to move around. And it takes you a few seconds, a few tries, because you don't know exactly where it is. 
but eventually moving that hand, you eventually find something and you hear click and then as the card on bars begin to lower into the ground. They don't lower all the way. There's about a foot where the stone kind of, they get stuck on the uh, spears of the top, um, but it li- it lowers them almost all the way. Paul will try to charge through. Okay. You charge through as Can the old bot begins to swing. Yeah, go and attack. All right. So it'll be, uh, yeah, Phoenix Blade. Sorry, this is a hammer. So what are my modifiers for this? It's just my normal it's proficiency bonus plus... Proficiency strength. and strength. Yeah. And it's a 1d10 if you're using okay. two hands. Plus strength. Uh, so first attack, uh, does a 15 hit? We're not blessed anymore, are we? No, that would have ran out already. Okay, so a 15? A 15, he threw a shield down. Make sure. That will, that will just miss, actually. As the hammer comes down above ball, he pushes his hammer up to the top and blocks it with the guard. You can hear the, the metal that kind of bends under the weight of you, ball. He's As resisting it. Bonus action, try to attack again with the Phoenix yeah. Blade. Go ahead. You lift off as he pushes off and he swings around to the side. 15 again, of course. It comes to the <laughs> side and he uses a swing and the momentum blocks the hammer against the hammer as they both, and both of your hands are vibrating at the slams of the hammers against you, against each other. He then goes for you as a 17 hit. Um, just to clarify, I have. Do we have our basic armors on? Yeah, you have your armor. They just took weapons and spellcasting focuses okay. away. So then it doesn't hit. Okay, so he swings towards you, but you use partial of the hammer and the armor in your own armor itself. It slams into it, but not enough to go through. Ellery Ezekiel. They both have to make strength saves. Okay. 12. Nope. Uh, 11. No. That's nine points of bludgeoning damage. Okay. In this storm, as he slams against Ball, Ball, you begin to raise your hammer up once again. But before you're able to come down, a loose rock slams into the side of this guy's temple as he falls to the ground, dropping the hammer above his head, behind his back as he falls back and down onto the ball pile of bodies. As soon as he's down, I drop the spear. Okay. Ball Um, hits him anyway. Okay, there's a sickening crunch under the bending of metal um, and the splattering of rib cages beneath as the storm is down, and you're now standing near a lift full of dead bodies. What kind of weapons does Ball immediately see? You see similar weapons. Looks like there's a dagger, some javelins. You see one of those guys had a massive maul, uh, much bigger than the hammer you're holding. Uh, there's also a heavy crossbow. And another shield. So the mall has 2d6 plus 2 bludgeoning. Now, I, I guess I should have asked this technically since I, before I did my, my moves and stuff. Would the thing have attuned to my weapon yet? We were, or were we only just a couple minutes? I, yeah, it hadn't been long enough for you to be okay. able to do it. Well, I missed anyway, but technically I shouldn't have been able to attack the second time. It, it's okay. Be um, good. So since it has, I guess in this case, Ball's just going uh, to say to Ezekiel, I don't care if you don't like metal. Uh, and he's going to throw the hammer that he's using right now to Ezekiel. And then he's going to grab them all. Well, I cannot be shape if I use it. That's why I, it's not a preference. Well, you're not a beast now. <sighs> We've lost. And we need to start preparing for that. Get on the fucking elevator. And I'm going to try and cast Pass Without a Trace on myself. Okay. You can another check. Yep. 14. Goes through. All right. I'm just holding on to that. Okay. Clutching onto that as you guys step onto the elevator, melee following. Ball that is a 2d6 uh, strength-based maul weapon. Uh, made out of the same marbled metal, the card on uh, steel, as the rest of the stuff there. As you throw the lever, I assume. I don't want to speak for you. Or are you guys were going to stay at the bottom? I think we're going up. Okay. I, I figured I didn't want to speak to you. Speak for you there. But yeah, you throw the lever and and the elevator slowly begins to move up. Vesper, you heard the words of Melly before? I cast you responded Channel Divinity. And, okay, so you drop the box and casting Channel Do Divinity. Do I have to drop the box? Can I drop the amber dagger? 
uh, the box is like a two-hander. It's a chest full okay. of stuff. Yeah. I'll okay. drop it at least one half of it, and I still okay. want to keep my hand on it, but... Okay, yeah, yeah. It's it, Then it's right at your feet, too. Okay. Um, and it just went off last time without a hitch, so I'm hoping... Okay. Turn undead. Go ahead and make a check. Do I have... To? I didn't the last time. Oh, I didn't. I meant, I meant to, so uh, go ahead and do it this time. Uh... Fuck me running. Eleven? You you try to focus. You try to reach out to Ain, but wherever she is, this place is beyond her reach. As you focus, open your eyes. There is uh, expecting, trying, hoping, praying for a little bit of that silver golden light. And when you open your eyes, there's nothing but the glowing eyes of the white before you. Ice white. Skin, pale, stretched taut across the skeleton beneath. He's wearing armor, leather, and he's holding manacles in his hands. And to his back are a number of skeletons. And you can see the few tops of the helms of the few umbok in the room over. As he begins to move towards you and begins to grab at your hand. No, nope, hell no. I'm going to um, try and resist and try. I'm going to do whatever I can to, like, force my way through as many okay. pieces as I can. So he's grabbing at you. That's acrobatics or athletics check. Yep, acrobatics for sure. Uh, 14. Uh, 19. Shit. So he grabs upon you and slams the manacle in one of your wrists as the rest of the skeletons move in and begin kind of swarming you and trying to grab upon you. I will spit in the white's eye and try and stab then if I can get that letter opener back. Um, okay. Um, so you, you're dropping the chest, grabbing it, trying to stab towards him. Yeah. So that's very good. It's 24. Yeah. No, 20, 23. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no sneak attack on that, but six piercing. You stab into him as you pull out. Um, it's strange. Nothing seems to drip out. There's a little bit of wetness on the dagger, but the blood doesn't pour like it would as the rest of the skeletons come in and he grabs your other wrist and throws I'm the struggling. manacles on them. I'm struggling. So athletics or acrobatics? Acrobatics. And I'm going to say disadvantage at this point because there's... Yeah, no, totally. I'm already at disadvantage. 14 skeletons around you. Um, but that is six, uh, 26. Okay. You're, you're fighting them off. This is a matter of time. I don't care. now this room is full of skeletons. I do not care. Um, I'm going to fight until I physically can't. Okay. And I'm um, just screaming for Amson the whole time. So you, you and keep cursing screaming, him out in whatever cursing, languages I know. <laughs> and keep fighting after stabbing, pushing, shoving away eventually over time. I did grow more and more exhausted in the weight of the skeleton just grabbing onto your back and weighing you down eventually buckle you to your knees. And the white, with a few stab wounds at this point, kind of squats down and puts the manacles on your other wrist and lifts those chains back up. I spit on him again. And he turns and begins to lead you out, manacled. As Amson, you're guided out of the embassy, down the front steps, where you can see a solid force of the will. There's a few giant bats with saddles on their back, a few vampires standing near them, a few mounted cavaliers like you saw earlier, the cavalry of the undead army that is the will, as you're marched out, your friend's hand upon your shoulder, whispering and promising that it'll be all right. As we come back to Ezekiel, Ellery, Ball, who are rising in the lift. If we get to the teleportation circle that we came through, can we get out that way? Uh, Melly requires the components to be able to cast it. Yeah, she would need to draw the circle we're going to, not the one we can't, are trying to pass from. Presuming that everybody will be like looking towards the exit of the elevator, Ezekiel's going to move into the back and I am going to be shape into a flea. Okay. And just hop on Melly's, uh, actually in Melly's hair. Okay. So as the elevator comes up and we begin to fade out, 
we see Amson kind of being guided towards with a friendly hand upon his shoulder out towards the last will and testament of Demiri Voss. We see Vesper chained under protest, but exhausted under the weight of the Onsign army of bones and whites. And we see the elevator clanking up and slowly come to a stop. As Ball, you see it first because of your height, but then the rest of you do, Ezekiel, from the form of a flea in Melly's hair. You see, surrounded at the entrance of this lift, where there's a hallway, you see there are lines of Umbok that have formed a shield wall. Over their shoulders, there are heavy crossbows trained upon your location. And beyond them, you see a number of skeletons and whites, as far as you can see, filling the hallway and whatever is beyond. And as that elevator comes to a stop, a little bit of dust shakes loose. That's where we're going to pick up next week. Oh, boy. Well, fuck. So what are you guys re-rolling as? That went mildly Whites. terribly. I don't know about you all. I'm going to survive. Oh, you're fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this episode of Back to the Story. For notifications when an episode goes live, you can find us on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. Download the app and subscribe or favorite us there. We also have a YouTube channel called Back to the Story, an actual play podcast. If you'd like to contact us, you can tweet us at back to underscore the story. If you can't fit it into 280 characters, you can email us at thebonfirefables at gmail.com. And if you'd like further information about the campaign, the player characters, or behind-the-scenes sneak peeks, follow us on either Twitter or our Tumblr website. Lastly, if you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash backtothestory.